9th grade, Algebra 1, Unit 2, Lesson 2, Illustrative Mathematics Retrieval Problems. Calculate the slope in problems 1 and 2. First, let's find the slope of the line in the graph for number 1. It's easy to find the slope of a line if there are points located where whole numbers intersect, like these two points. The formula I use for this is called slope equals rise over run. Here's how it works. Start at this point and count the number of units of the rise. 1, 2. So the rise is 2. Next, count the number of units we must run to the right. 1, 2, 3. So the run is 3. The slope of the line on this graph is 2 over 3, which is a 2 thirds slope. Next, let's calculate the slope using the data in the table for number 2. To calculate the slope from the data, let's first take another look at the table. What is slope? In simple terms, the slope tells us how steep a line is. In math, the slope shows how much the y value or f of n changes for each step in the x value or n. We can find the slope using this formula. Slope equals the change in f of n divided by the change in n. Step 1. Pick two points. Let's pick two points from the table to calculate the slope. We'll use 4, negative 31, and 16, negative 67. Step 2. Find the change in f of n and find the change in n. The change in f of n is negative 67 minus negative 31 which is the same as negative 67 plus 31, and that equals negative 36. So the change in f of n is negative 36. Now let's find the change in n. The change in n is 16 minus 4, which equals 12. So the change in n is 12. Step 3. Calculate the slope. Now we can plug these values into the slope formula. Slope equals negative 36 over 12, which equals negative 3. So the slope is negative 3. Problem 3. Find a recursive and explicit equation for the table in problem 2. In algebra, recursive means that each number in a pattern or sequence is found by using the number that came before it. Instead of just having a formula that tells you exactly what the number is, you use the previous number to find the next one. And in algebra, explicit means a formula that lets you find any number in a pattern or sequence directly without needing to know the previous numbers. First, look for a pattern. See how the values of f of n change as n increases. I notice that from 4 to 7, the value drops by 9. Then, from 7 to 11, the value drops by 12. And from 11 to 16, the value drops by 15. This tells us there's a steady pattern where the numbers are decreasing by bigger amounts each time. More specifically, the drop increases by 3 each time. 9, 12, 15. Next, we can figure out the explicit equation. This is a formula that lets you find f of n directly without needing to look at earlier values. After doing some math, we find the explicit equation is f of n equals negative 3n minus 19. This means that for any value of n, you can use the formula to calculate f of n. For example, if you plug in n equals 4, you get f of 4 equals negative 31, which matches the table. Now let's find the recursive equation. In this form, you use the previous value to find the next one. We already know that each number goes down by 3 more than the last one. So, the recursive equation starts with f of 4 equals negative 31. To find the next number, subtract 3 from the previous one each time. So f of n equals f of n minus 1 minus 3. To sum it all up, the explicit equation is f of n equals negative 3n minus 19, which tells you how to get f of n for any value of n. The recursive equation is f of n equals f of n minus 1 minus 3, meaning you can find each number by subtracting 3 from the one before it. In problems 4 and 5, solve for x. Problem 4 x plus 5 equals 13. To solve the equation x plus 5 equals 13, the goal is to find out what number x must be so that when you add 5 to it, the result is 13. Let's go through the steps. Step 1. Understand the equation. The equation says that some number x, when added to 5, equals 13. We need to figure out what x is. Step 2. Get x by itself. To solve 4x, we want to undo the plus 5 part of the equation. To do this, we subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side to keep the equation balanced. So, subtract 5 from both sides. x plus 5 minus 5 equals 13 minus 5. Step 3. Simplify. On the left side, plus 5 and minus 5 cancel each other out, leaving just x. x equals 8. Step 4. Check the solution. To make sure our answer is correct, plug x equals 8 back into the original equation. 8 plus 5 equals 13. Since this is true, the solution is correct. So x equals 8. Problem 5. 2 thirds x equals 12. Let's solve the equation 2 thirds x equals 12 step by step, and I'll explain each part clearly. Step 1. 
Understand the equation. The equation says that two-thirds of some number x equals 12. Our job is to find what that number x is. Step 2. Get rid of the fraction. To make things easier, we want to get rid of the fraction two-thirds in front of x. To do that, we multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of two-thirds, which is 3 over 2, or 3 halves. This cancels out the fraction on the left side and leaves x by itself. Multiply both sides by 3 halves. 3 halves times 2 thirds x equals 3 halves times 12. Step 3. Simplify. On the left side, 3 halves times 2 thirds cancels out to just 1x or just x, because multiplying a number by its reciprocal always equals 1. x equals 3 halves times 12. Now on the right side, multiply 3 halves by 12. First, think of 12 as the fraction 12 over 1. x equals 3 times 12 over 2 equals 36 over 2 equals 18. Step 4. Check the solution. To make sure our answer is correct, let's plug x equals 18 back into the original equation. 2 thirds times 18 equals 12. Since 2 thirds times 18 does equal 12, the solution is correct. So x equals 18. For more help with Algebra 1, watch this next video. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.